some of my favorite clients, one person in particular, I could not figure out why I wasn't able to help him. And his high beta kept going up, and I'm gonna show you the graphs, and I could not figure it out until I figured it out that he was completely hooked on pornography and wasn't telling anybody, so nobody knew about it, but it was damaging his brain. And wait till you see the brain graphs when it finally came out of the darkness and light was shed upon it and he was able to move through to free his brain from the chains of pornography, which is why I have become a certified coach for sexual addictions and for partners because this is in my practice and I need to be able to help people. It's in your practice too. Okay, enough of my soapbox, let's move on. So why is why am I talking to you about that? It's because what we're talking about here is use to misuse to abuse to addiction. And I'm gonna show you the actual continuum in just a little bit, but in the short run, what I wanna show you is this is a slippery slope and all the research shows that for many people it can happen really quickly, which is why pornography is on the forefront right now because of what they call the triple A's. It's accessible, it's affordable, and it's anonymous, which makes it so dangerous. Um, and again, you know, people are using their phones or TVs late at night, so nobody knows about it. Accessible, affordable, anonymous makes it very dangerous, and then it can happen within days, and I'm gonna show you how. Okay, so happens very quickly, super slippery slope. A person just thinks that they're, you know, they're gonna just chill and watch porn for a half hour. Then they don't understand the mechanisms that have happened in their brain that first time. They go back for the second time. The mechanism is hardwiring in the first, the what happened the first time is being hardwired in the second time and so on. One, two, three, four times, and we already have the slippery slope moving from use to misuse to abuse to addiction. Okay, so these are brains looking at the functional changes between a healthy brain and an addicted brain. In the healthy brain, you can see the areas that are lit up. And I'm gonna show you them on a different diagram in just a minute. But there's lots of activation in the healthy brain when this person is out enjoying their life, when they're spending time with their friends, when they're engaged in their work that they find meaningful. The healthy brain is activated for pleasure in life in the real world. What happens in the addicted brain is there is no longer that level of reward or pleasure from the things in life that should bring the level of activation that we see in the healthy brain. So this was a surprising finding for many of the researchers because they thought it would make the rewards go off the chart. Actually what's happening is that when this person is living their life, their brain is not able to receive the activation that it would if it was healthy. The only way that it can get the activation that it needs to feel okay is to engage in the addictive behavior or use the addictive sub substance. So that is why it becomes so dangerous because now the person's having dinner with their family and let's just use pornography. You might not wanna do it, but I'm gonna do it anyways because it's a passion project. Um, so let's say this person didn't watch pornography a year ago and a year ago they're having dinner with their friends and family and they're enjoying it and their brain's healthy and activated like that. Now they've been watching pornography every night for an hour for one year. Now they're sitting with their friends and family and their brain has this lower level of activation. It doesn't want to be there. It is annoyed that it's there because it wants to get back to the activity that it gives the brain the pleasure that it needs. This is how the slope is slippery and this is what actually happens. So what happens in the end is that addicted brain needs extreme amounts of stimuli to be able to get the amount of pleasure that the healthy brain gets just out in the world. What happens is there's tolerance and escalation that begins immediately so that the brain has to get more and more and more stimuli over time to get the same level of activation that it got a week ago. So escalation in behaviors, if it's substance abuse, there's more and more um, consumption of alcohol or for drugs, if it's pornography use, there's more watching and it has to become more extreme to get the same level of pleasure that they had a month ago. So then what happens is, and 
this is the most mind-boggling part for most people that they don't see the connections between is that it creates behavioral changes in the person over time. So because of this lower level of activation in the brain when the person's just living their life, they now have dissatisfaction in their life and they do not equate it to pornography, which is why I am so passionate about it. They think that's just something they do to relax. They don't get it's changing the activation levels in their brain so that now when they go to work and they don't want to engage in work, they just don't feel like it, they don't equate it to their habit. And it's literally being caused by it. So it's dissatisfaction on the low end, but it's depression and anxiety, anger and rage on the high end. And so that's why this is really important to add, you know, how often do you watch pornography and for how long on intakes? And this is not something that many people are gonna offer up that information, but it can't hurt to ask because then at least if they answer, and I've added it, so more and more people are actually writing it down uh, because they're there for big problems and they want help, so now they're writing it down. Same thing with alcohol use or drug use. You know, We have most of that covered on our intakes, but uh, this is what happens in the brain and we're gonna dig in in just a second. But then what happens is it creates an addiction cycle that I'm gonna show you. And it's characterized by hiding the behavior, which leads to shame and to lies. So the addiction pattern is able to brew underneath and get worse and worse and worse. Okay, so let's break it down. How does addiction hijack the brain? The bubbles you see above this head are listed here in the steps. Number one is the person has, if, if the person's living their life, First step is in their actual life, their brain is maintaining homeostasis, meaning that if you go have a pleasurable experience, go for a walk with your dog and your your spouse and you love them and you're having a lovely evening, your brain will dump 10 milligrams of dopamine into your brain to give you the feeling of pleasure when you're having a relaxing evening with your family. Now you go and engage in the addictive substance, substance or behavior, we're just gonna use porn because I think it's easy, that night you go and you watch pornography. Because the stimuli is so much, higher levels of stimuli than a walk with your family, it dumps 20 milligrams of dopamine into the brain. So what happens is it rocks homeostasis. So homeostasis in the brain ceases to exist. The brain compensates, it's trying to get back to homeostasis. And so what it does, it stoppers the dopamine production. So now you went and you watched porn, we had a 20 milligram dump, brain stoppers that to get back to homeostasis. Now the person goes back to watch porn again, the addictive behavior, and the brain dumps 20 milligrams of dopamine again, but then it's stoppering it because it's trying to maintain homeostasis. So what happens is now the brain has to produce 40 milligrams of dopamine to be able to get the same as the first hit, the 20 milligrams, because half of it is being stoppered. That's how tolerance occurs. So in the example of pornography, you're watching it, you get the 20 milligram dump initially, now you need 40 to feel 20. And the same thing happens with alcohol. So that's why people might start with beer and alcohol and then they ramp it up to liquor and then they have to ramp it up to two drinks or three drinks to get the same feeling. Same thing with pornography. It might be a half hour, now it has to be an hour and it has to be much more extreme because the brain is trying to create homeostasis so it's stopping the dopamine and that will continue on and on and on. And so what happens, especially when it comes to pornography addiction, is people start crossing moral boundaries. And in sexual addiction, people start acting out with humans because they can't get that same level of dopamine dump into their brain from watching pornography. Okay, so the cycle continues and it worsens, behavior changes, tolerance increases, and if it's all being hidden by shame and guilt, then it is nobody knows nobody can step in until this person hits defcon let me show you what's happening in the brain mechanisms in the brain and you can see the diagram here what happens is in the ventral tegmental area and you can see it there in blue closest to the brain stem and it says right on there it's the dopamine production area 
what happens is that's where that dopamine dump is happening of 20 milligrams. Then the dopamine travels through the reward pathway in the brain to the nucleus accumbens. And in the nucleus accumbens, that is the area for motivation and for goal-directed behavior. So basically there, it's locking in the memory of that feeling of the 20 milligram dump that was initially there during that coupled experience of whatever the addictive substance or behavior is and the feeling that they got from the dopamine dump in their brain. It's being locked in by the nucleus accumbens in that area and it remembers it and it wants it again and it's going to create goal-directed behavior to go get that feeling again of reward. But then it travels through that dopamine, that reward pathway travels through to the prefrontal cortex. And we know in the prefrontal cortex that that is the area for executive function, it's for judgment control, it's for inhibitory control of behaviors. That's where thinking happens. So up in the prefrontal cortex, it's now getting this, also this reward from, from that addictive behavior and it's feeling the pleasure and it is eventually going to knock that area out to be able to make good decisions. So that's why decision making becomes impaired because of the way that the reward pathways in the brain work.